Hi, my name is Claire Sims and I'm the Admissions and Access Officer at Worcester College in Oxford. It's part of my job to help applicants find the academic resources they need to apply to university. And in this video, I'll be talking about supercurriculars, what they are, where to find them and how you can use them to make a great university application. Now, you might not have come across the term supercurricular before, but we use it all the time at universities to describe any activity you pursue outside of your normal schoolwork, which is still related to your academic interests. These are resources which you haven't been specifically told to look at, like a textbook for one of your A-level courses, but which you've sought out independently because you're interested in the subject and you want to know more. For example, a student who's interested in history might read a subject specific magazine like History Today, listen to episodes of the radio show in our time about famous historical figures and visit museums like the Ashmolean in their spare time. A student who's interested in biology might read a popular science magazine like The New Scientist or Nature, read a short introductory book about the climate or animal behaviour and listen to the BBC Earth podcast. We draw a distinction between supercurriculars like these and extracurriculars, which are the non-academic things you do in your spare time, like football, volunteering or arts and crafts. Unless these activities are actually related to the university subjects you're planning to study, like painting in your spare time if you'd like to study fine art, they won't count as supercurriculars. There's still room in a university application to talk about them though, even if they aren't directly related to your academic interests, and we'll come back to that a bit later. So why do supercurriculars matter? Well, the most obvious answer is that they're an enjoyable challenge. If you'd like to study a subject at university, you're probably already engaging with it outside of your regular schoolwork because you're interested in it. From the perspective of a university, though, they can also help potential students to meet a lot of the criteria we're looking for. At Oxford, we look for students who meet the subject requirements for their course. That's things like the grades you need at A-level or equivalent, which are all listed on our website. But we also look for a range of other qualities. Using a few well-chosen supercurriculars in your application proves that you're really interested in your course, interested enough to pursue it outside of school hours. More than that, it can help you to make sure that the subject you're intending to apply for is actually right for you. If you're thinking about law, but you're finding all the law books you read really boring, it's a good indication that you might want to think about a different subject. If you're broadly interested in physics and then one day you listen to a podcast about the interaction between physics and ethics and it completely captures your attention, it can open up the doors to totally new university subjects which you might not have considered before, like physics and philosophy or human sciences. Universities aren't just looking at what you've already achieved in your school career, but they're also thinking about your potential performance over the next few years. Are you going to enjoy spending three to five years focusing on this subject? You can answer that question with a yes by proving that you've really explored your subject independently, so you have a sense of what a degree in that subject would actually look like. Use supercurriculars to demonstrate that you have the skills and qualities that universities are looking for. Not only are you getting the grades you need at school, but you're also proving that you're a self-motivated student by finding your own academic resources to push the boundaries of what you already know. Finally, university study is much more independent than studying for your A-levels or equivalent qualifications, so making the effort to pursue supercurriculars now can help you to bridge that gap between the end of school and the start of university. If you can show in your application that you're developing the skills to research and evaluate things under your own steam, the universities you apply to will be reassured that you would suit their self-led learning style. So now you know why it's a good idea to start looking at some supercurriculars, but where do you actually find them? Well, before we look at some examples, here are a few websites which basically compile big lists. These links are also in the description box below. A good place to start is the university website, which has reading and resource suggestions for every subject that we offer. You can also look at Staircase 12, which is a website run by one of the other colleges in Oxford. It has a big resource hub, which is full of suggestions, and it also has some articles written by current Oxford students about the supercurriculars that they used when they were applying to university. Whilst you're looking at college websites, don't forget to check out Worcester. We also have some suggestions on our website and we run a scheme called the Bookshelf Project where we send free books to students in years 10, 11 and 12 on various academic subjects. You can take a look at the books we're currently offering on our website and you can also find reviews written by previous participants. Finally, it's always worth asking your teachers if they have any recommendations. They'll have the best sense of what you're already covering at school and they'll almost certainly have some ideas about the resources you could use to go beyond the curriculum. What kind of supercurriculars do universities look for? Well, the list is pretty much endless and you can make a case for almost any academic resource which has expanded your knowledge of or interest in your subject. But I think we can classify the most common resources into five broad categories. The first one is books, magazines and newspapers. Universities always recommend reading widely around your course and while reading isn't the only thing you can do, it can be a useful place to start, especially because you can often find these resources at low cost in libraries or secondhand bookshops. You might want to begin with some short introductory texts about the subject you're considering, such as the titles in Oxford's very short introduction series. 
These books are only about 100 pages long and they briefly summarise the key features of an academic topic, like algebra or Latin American literature. Bestseller lists can be a great source of inspiration. You don't have to buy from the booksellers directly, but it can be useful to look at what's in demand and then find the books elsewhere. Future medicine students might be interested in popular science books about cutting edge topics like gene editing, for example, while English students might be interested in the latest novels. You can find millions of books and articles for free in your school or local libraries and also in big online archives. Project Gutenberg or the Internet Text Archive are just a couple of suggestions. This is with the caveat, of course, that you want to make sure that any resources you find are from reputable academic sources. A good rule of thumb is to look for publications from popular publishers like university presses and to always critically assess the content that you're engaging with. We'll talk more about how to do that later. Popular magazines can be a great way to get to grips with the details of your subject in a relatively short space of time. For example, you might find some articles in The New Scientist about the latest developments in chemistry, or an article in The New Statesman about an obscure case study which you can apply to a topic you're learning about in your politics A-level. You may also want to keep up with the news. You can look for subject-specific news, which is often found in the magazines we just looked at, or on websites for professionals in your field. If you're looking for a more general overview, news magazines like The Week can be handy, as well as news websites like the BBC and The Guardian. Now, in my opinion, TV, radio and podcasts are the unsung heroes of supercurricular activities because they have the power to cover a lot of content quickly in a really engaging way. Your personal statement doesn't just have to be jam packed with books. A book or two can be helpful and you might include a few if they're your favourite way to learn or if they're pretty important for your subject like English or history. But if it's really a popular podcast or a documentary that sparked your interest in a subject, don't be afraid to mention that. Obviously, though, anyone can post a YouTube video or start a podcast. So again, look for reputable sources which are ideally created by or endorsed by universities and think critically about the content. We'll start with TV shows and videos, which should be fairly easy to find on the Internet using platforms like BBC iPlayer or Four On Demand. A budding politics student might find a BBC panorama investigation about a government scandal, for example, or a geography student might find an interesting film from the British Film Institute about the British landscape 100 years ago. Radio programmes can have a wealth of high quality content. Just take a look at the archives of Radio 3 and Radio 4 for examples. One of the radio shows we always point out is In Our Time, which is a half hour programme on Radio 4, where a few academics sit around the table talking about a topic they research. A really important benefit of listening to radio shows and podcasts like this with a panel of experts is that it gives you an insight into how academics talk to each other about their research. And that can be really useful when it comes to talking about your own interests, like in a personal statement or in an interview. Then there are podcasts. These have become so popular in the last 10 years or so that there are now thousands out there, which means you're sure to find something which suits you. Again, you want to look for reliable sources, so podcasts produced by universities or academics are usually a safe bet. For example, Oxford University itself has a huge archive of podcasts created by our academics across the whole range of subjects that we offer. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that you can find lots of information online, starting with the websites of the universities you'd like to apply to. Oxford and Cambridge, for example, both have subject specific lists of suggested resources for applicants, which we'll link into the description below. You can find subject specific websites run by independent organisations or charities, which also compile lists of resources for prospective students or news about developments in the field. For example, the Institute of Physics website has a whole educational section which future physics students could use. The Discover Anthropology website explains what the study of anthropology is and has a list of recommended resources to find out more about it. Websites can be particularly useful for scientists because part of making a good university application is showing that you're ready for the challenge of studying your subject at a higher level. And a great way to do that if you're a mathematician or a chemist is to show that you're already thinking about and trying to tackle some advanced problems which go beyond your A-level syllabus. These websites introduce you to some of those problems. For example, a physicist or an engineer might want to look at next time questions, which are kind of hypothetical brain teasers using the principles of maths and physics. A computer scientist might want to look at GeomeLab, which is an online learning environment developed by Oxford's computer science department for prospective applicants. Now, this is the slide with all the minimalist logos, and they represent some of the most well-known museums, exhibitions and galleries in the world. If you've been inspired by seeing a particular artefact or a work of art, you can mention that in your application as a way in which you've engaged with your subject. Now, this list is not exhaustive by any means, and you might be able to think of some local galleries or museums in your area which also have relevant resources for your subject. Don't count these big institutions out, though, because they might have some online tools you can use, particularly resources they've developed in the past year or so when they haven't been able to welcome visitors in real life.
For example, the British Museum has put parts of its audio tour online, so you can look at high quality pictures of the Rosetta Stone or a treasure from Sutton Hoo and listen to the tour guide talk about it. Some museums and galleries have digitised parts of their collections, like the Science Museum. You can use search functions like this one to find pictures and descriptions of objects which might interest you, like Crick and Watson's original double helix model of DNA. You don't need to have explored your subject through experiences like school trips or work experience in order to make a good university application. But if you have done some of these things and you found them helpful for your understanding of your subject, you can talk about them. This might include summer schools which aim to prepare students for university life, like Unique or Target Oxbridge. You might have attended a public lecture on an academic topic, either in person or online. Just like museums digitising their collections, lots of universities have put their public lectures online over the past year, and that's a great asset for students who are thinking about making their university applications. It means you can get easy access to lots of high quality content. If you're looking for lectures, the YouTube channels of the universities or specific departments you're interested in might be a good place to start. If you've visited places which are relevant to your subject, you could talk about that in your university application. We've got pictures here of the Supreme Court for potential lawyers, for example, or the Eden Project for potential biologists. If you've completed work experience in your field, you might find it helpful to talk about that in your university application to show that you've thought about the practicalities involved in studying your subject. You should look at the selection criteria for your course at the universities you're considering to find out how important real life experience is. But remember that these activities aren't an absolute necessity, especially in the middle of a pandemic when it's particularly difficult to find public spaces which are open to visitors and workplaces open to students on work experience. Plenty of students make successful applications just using other resources which are publicly available. So now that we know what kind of super curriculums you might be looking for, let's think about how to make the most of them. Remember that you don't just want to be collecting super curriculums to feather your nest, but you also want to be using them wisely so you can show universities that you have the academic skills to evaluate and compare resources. Here are a few suggestions for quick things you can do now with your super curriculums, which will be really helpful down the line when you come to make your university application. We'll go through these quickly for the sake of brevity, but you may want to pause these slides to take a closer look at the examples. Most importantly, make sure to keep track of all your super curriculars. You might want to keep a journal of everything you use, and this would include anything that's relevant to your university application. So books, podcasts, magazines, lectures, and so on. If you've already looked at a few super curriculars before this point, like you went on a school trip, which sparked your interest a couple of years ago, try to jot down a list of all those resources now. So you have a complete picture of everything you've done so far when you come to make your application. And as you keep track of every resource you use, don't just make a note of the name and the date, but also try to engage critically with what you're looking at. Summarise what the resource was about and what you learned from it. Did you like it or dislike it? Did you agree or disagree with the argument that was put forward? What evidence was used? What other resources could you look at to corroborate or contradict this resource? Keep track of your ideas now so they'll be easier to remember down the line. Make links and comparisons between the resources you're using. For example, if you read a book about the future of computer science, you might then seek out an article about a particularly interesting part of it, like artificial intelligence. This might then lead you to a podcast about the ethics of artificial intelligence, which could feature a couple of academics putting forward the case for pros and cons. This is your invitation to jump down the rabbit hole of any academic topics you're interested in and try to find various supercurriculars which approach them from different angles. When you come to write your personal statement, it's helpful to be able to show not just that you've explored your subject widely, but also that you've developed the academic skills to be able to engage critically with the resources you've used. It can be really handy to talk about what you're doing, even if you're only expressing your ideas out loud to a pet or a houseplant. This will help you get used to articulating your thoughts in an academic way, just like the panel of experts in the podcast we talked about earlier. And that will give you an advantage when you're trying to communicate your enthusiasm for your subject in a personal statement or an interview. If you know other people who are thinking about applying for a similar university subject, you could start a book club or a discussion group with them. You could also ask a friend or a family member to help. Get them to read a short magazine article about a topic you like and discuss it with them, for example. Once you have a few super curriculars under your belt and you're starting to think about putting them into your application, find the selection criteria for your course online and try to match each item on the list to an activity you've pursued. For example, if you're applying for medicine, the selection criteria might include your motivation to study the subject, ethical awareness and communication skills. You could show that you tick all of those boxes by mentioning the medical books and articles you've read in your spare time, the podcast you listen to about medical ethics, and your participation in a discussion group at school or your work experience at a local hospital. Finally, make sure to select your resources carefully. 
it's great to have a huge pool of super curriculums to choose from and you should explore your subject widely enough to make sure that you're actually interested in it and you won't be stuck when asked to provide examples to prove it but universities aren't just looking for a list of everything you've ever done an easy way to find out which super curriculums should be going into your personal statement is to look back at your reading journal or make a list of all the different resources you've used and highlight the ones which have had the greatest impact on your understanding of or enthusiasm for your subject try to identify what it is about these resources that have made them so important you might find some common themes which you can use to structure parts of your personal statement, like an overarching interest in revolutions for a history student, for example. Remember that everything you put into your statement should have a clear and logical reason for being there. So how do you put all of this together into a great university application and more specifically into a great personal statement? Well, if you want some more detailed advice, you can find a few relevant links in the description box, including a link to one of our other videos about making an application to a top university. We do have a few general rules to share here, though, and one of the big ones is to make sure that your personal statement is mostly academic in focus. We primarily want to know about your interest in your subject and your aptitude for university study. For Oxford and Cambridge, we generally recommend that your personal statement is at least 80% academic, which will include your supercurriculars, and at most 20% extracurricular. What will the academic portion of your personal statement look like? It will be personal to you, of course, but we have a couple of examples from successful personal statements here to show how a well-chosen supercurricular could fit in. In the top example, an applicant for maths and philosophy has used a STEM challenge to show not just their willingness to go beyond the school curriculum to expand their math skills, but also their interest in ethical problems. In the bottom example, this English applicant has mentioned their blog, which is a quick way of indicating that they read widely around their subject and are used to critically assessing what they read. If you do want to include some extracurricular activities in your personal statement, it's a good rule of thumb to make sure they're still related to your aptitude for university study in some way. For example, this PPE applicant has mentioned that they are head boy and take part in student parliament. These roles might not have taught them anything about PPE as an academic subject, but they have helped the student to develop key communication and organisation skills, which will come in handy when they're studying at university. We've come to the end of our introduction to supercurriculars, and I hope we've covered some of the key topics here, which people are always curious about when we talk about university applications. We're happy to answer any further questions as always, and you're welcome to get in touch with us at admissions at walk.ox.ac.uk. That's the email address at the bottom there. You can also visit our college website where we have lots of resources for applicants, including a supercurricular reading group, which you can read about in the description box below. Thank you very much for your time and good luck with those applications.